So, uh, hey at all, my name is Marco Sefts and I work at the Institute of Robotics and Mechatronics for the German Aerospace Center. And today I will show you the sound source localization we do at our Institute for Robotic Applications. And I want to start to give you a short overview. So I will show you what robot we are working on. Then I will give you uh, an introduction to the challenges in acoustic environments because I think not all of you will be familiar with that. Then I'll show you our recent advances in sound source localization. And I also want to give you a short demonstration for speaker segmentation. I'm sorry? Okay, I, I move on. And uh, in the end, I will give you an outlook. So the system I'm wor working with is uh, called Warren Justin. He's now with us for nearly 15 years. However, he has some updates, so he's still up to date. He can move in all directions, has arms. And we built in some safety features so that we can work with humans. And when I talk about working with humans, so human-robot interaction, we have to need to be aware of uh, the presence of humans in our working area. We need to be able to localize the operator and identify commands from him. So basically, you can either use a remote for that, like using a tablet interface, or you can use vision systems. However, they are limited in the field of view. You are heavily depending on the light conditions and you also depend on the line of sight. So there must not be any obstacle between the operator and the robot. So what we are using, we are using acoustic sensors. Specifically, we're using microphones. And in theory, we now have omnidirectional operation because we don't rely on any field of view anymore. We are, of course, independent on the light conditions and we do not uh, need line of sight. So there can be an obstacle and we are still able to receive information from the operator. And on our system, we are using a microphone array consisting of eight microphones which are placed on the forehead of Justin. So now, when we are talking about acoustic environments, I, I give you a short illustration on the right side. You can see the main source, which are we uh, trying to localize. We have the microphone arrays, which are representing the robot. And we have different, different problems which arise here. So we can either have additional sources, which emit some sound wave, which we call noise, and they overlay our receiving process and interfere in further steps. Another one can be echo so that we receive the, the wave reflected as some surface. And we also have reverberations, which is um, the reflection at every surface you have in your environment. It sums up to, to some ambient noise, so you lower your signal to noise ratio. You can compare that if you go into a church and talk, and when you stop talking, you still hear the noise going on and on and on. So what we are doing at our institute is now we want to do sound source localization and we focus on an uh, algorithm called music, which is a super resolution algorithm. We expect that we can enhance uh, most out of it and have a really sharp uh, localization result. However, it's really costly and um, we are doing some enhancements. So we do some um, smart band selection. We even introduce a motion model. So we recently introduced uh, an algorithm called Motion Model Enhanced Music, which is currently under review. And with that, we introduce a novel robust detector, which is able to do localization in the indoor scenarios and is capable of doing that under reverberations and echo. We also want to do this online on the robot and in real time. So we have done some processing steps so that we have a processing time of around 200 microseconds for localizing in 2D. And for this workshop, I wanted to show you a quick application where we can use this information. So I set up a demonstration where we have two speakers and I want to show which speaker is currently speaking solely based on the audio direction we get from our system. So we are not using any vision system. We are not exploiting the frequency of these two different speakers. And you can even see that we are even using a scenario where the two speakers are not facing the system, but they are facing each other's. And we are doing this in an environment which is affected by reverberations and echo. And if you show, uh, if you look at the results, so here at the top, I see, uh, show you the ground truth, which is manually labeled. And now we let uh, a state-of-the-art algorithm called AFRF music 
use this information and uh, try to segment which speaker is speaking. And this state-of-the-art algorithm is uh, not not uh, optimized for indoor scenarios. And you can see, like in the middle speech phases, that we have a lot of switching between left and right. And if you now use our approaches, where we uh, enhance the motion model, you can see that we have a lot of uh, single estimations, not for the complete phase. However, if you use simple further uh, um, expanding algorithms, so, um, you can label the complete phases. So I showed to you that we are able to use audio information as an additional modal input source. And we even enhance that for using that on robotic platforms. And um, what we want to do next is we want to exploit this information and combine it with other modalities, for instance, with uh, visual information, so that we can get even more optimized and enhanced uh, perception of our environment. And our ultimate goal while we are doing this, this um, audio information processing steps is that we want to enhance the acceptance of robots in the interfaces with humans by like using uh, the speech interface as an intuitive way to command the robot. So that's the end of my presentation and uh, thank you for your attention. Also thank you that I can be part of this uh, very informative uh, workshop and uh, I'm open for questions. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Marco, for, for your presentation. Sorry for the horrible pronunciation of, of your surname. Uh, you're not the first one. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any question from the audience? Yeah, uh, if, if there's any, I, I, I was wondering, um, yeah, you mentioned that you use a microphone array. What is, what is the yeah, typical number of how many microphones do you, do you need for a decent uh, robustness and, and accuracy? Well, the, the thing is, uh, in theory, you only need two microphones for that. Um, uh -huh. the, the thing is, if you have more sources in that, and uh, the fact is that we are not using the normal cross-correlation, but we are using the algorithm music, um, we need to have at least one more microphone on our system than there are sources present in our environment. And uh, yeah. we started with four microphones, now we have eight microphones to, to cope with uh, typical indoor scenarios where you have a lot of noise sources like a fridge or a television, or even you have two or three people speaking at the same time. So, um, so it's heavily depending on your application but um, our approaches uh, show that uh, four are enough for, for a normal task, and we just use eight because we want to be more robust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is, is there any, let me check the Slack channel, uh, just in case there are any additional questions. I, I cannot see, I cannot see any. So can you, can you give us a hint uh, in, in yeah, in, in a rough accuracy or robustness of the system, how, how yeah, in centimeters, for example, in, yeah, in localization or in angle, in localization accuracy. Okay. Um, so, so we measure accuracy on our system in degrees um, mm -hmm. from the robot, what it sees, and we are able to, to localize with a degree of one to two degrees accuracy uh, in normal environments. Uh -huh. And are, are there uh, string failure cases like, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, outliers or uh, really wrong estimations at, at some points? Sorry, I, I don't get the question. Yeah, so how, how reliable this is? I mean, the, the error, I, I consider it to be quite low, but uh, yeah, is it reliable? Is it robust in, in, in many situations? So like in, in most of the cases, we have an accuracy of, of up to two degrees. We can localize in theory up to 0 0.5 degrees, but that's not capable in real environments. So um, taking into account <laughs> that we have some um, probability in going a bit to left, a bit to right, it's uh, two degrees. And um, if you are in a normal environment, in an office environment or indoor environment, uh, like 92% of all uh, estimations are correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. 